Hey guys, um, welcome to the channel. I know this is a weird set this time compared to what we normally have, but today we have someone walking into the doors that you do know, but you don't know, and we're gonna teach you a little something about them today. So welcome to, I guess, the couch? That's kind of a weird intro. <clears throat> not a casting couch, please. It's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not the couch you think it is. Mr. Eddie Fiola, my friend, my partner, this is the man, and I'd like to welcome you to Supercross BMX. So come on in. You took off and became the absolute superstar of the sport. Um, everybody knew who you were. I was the shitty little kid that just loved to ride. Yeah. And I was working in the industry side of things, you know, because I loved to ride. I ended up working at SE. I ended up working at GT. I used to see you, you know, when I was over at SE all the time. I used to see you at the skate parks. I used to see you at GT. I still remember the time that Rich Long got so mad when you pulled up with the pickup truck. You're uh, lifted up. What was that, an 86? Was it the camouflage one? or The, the camouflage yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you backed up and you just filled up with a bunch of bikes. Yeah. Rich was so mad when you left. He's like, how many bikes did Eddie take? <laughs> what the hell? But, but that was the best thing about riding for GT is like a lot of the stuff was, n nothing was categorized or, or calculated out or they just, hey, did you need a bike? Then we took a bike. We, yeah. we just got stuff. You need handlebars, we need cranks. We just, they gave us anything we wanted. When I rode for Kuahara back with Howie Cohen, right? We used to have a shopping cart and we just rode through the aisles and we just started, because it was everything bicycles, and we just put stuff in the cart. Right. And he says, are you done? You guys got everything? You're sure? And he gave us a thumbs up and we're on our way. Yeah. And, and Howie was an amazing man. Howie had so much energy for the sport and so much love for the sport. Um, Howie's wife, unfortunately, was in the hospital over here at St. Mary's. Mm. So Howie used to come by here all the time. Oh, cool. And we'd sit and he'd, whenever his wife would be taking a nap or something and Howie needed a little bit of a break, he'd come over and he'd be like, oh, Bill, you know, you should, you should buy the Kuahara name. We should revamp that. We should get that going. Howie, I appreciate it, man. I've got my hands full. Yeah. But Howie had so much love and so much passion for the sport. And he did. He used to do so much amazing, cool stuff. Yeah. It, it was cool. I mean, I remember with GT. I mean, you would show up. Martin would show up. Hell, I remember when Josh White would show up, you know, and we had the ramp out there at the side. Yeah. And it was cool. It was fun. And that was the GT that I loved working at. Right. It was such a good time. And when it became corporate, when they broke the ground for mm -hmm. Gothard, I was just like, I'm over that. And that's, that's when you left. That's when Tommy left. That's when I left. That's when so many people left and it became such a big corporate side right, of things. Right, right. Yeah, it's weird how you, you were talking about um, documenting all the BMX stuff. And, and you know, what's weird is that uh, Dogtown and Z-Boys, you know, when they did their documentary on skateboarding, skateboarders had friends who didn't ride skateboards, but they had cameras that they filmed and, you know, 16 mil, 8 mil, and they just filmed stuff of their friends riding skateboards, where when we're riding BMX and we're jumping at some dirt spot, we don't have friends who have cameras. No. If you're not riding your bike, you're not hanging out. You're just... Yeah. You, so we don't have a lot of that documentation. We don't have that, that vintage footage unless you're some mom or some owner of, of a company that is taking video or film. Um, yeah, to, to get some documentation and to do a document, documentary, documentary. Of, of what our life was like back then, uh, it'd be awesome. Oh man, well, and that's part of what we've been trying to do. And like with you, with the Legend Bike Co., with what we've done with you with the former pro that's something where we've been trying to make it to where it's a fun thing to bring some of that lifestyle back in right to make sure that everybody back then remembers some of it and i know we haven't really put the effort forth i think that i've needed to because i've been so busy with supercross and i've been so busy with the surgeries and different things to where it's been a fun little project to where You've had your movie business, you've got your car business, you've got, you know, all your stuff going on. I've got Supercross going on and we've got the guitar business going on right. and we've got, you know, everything going on with the medical issues. So, I mean, it's been fun, but 
that's where I want to put a lot more focus on it. And that's mm. where now we've got some people here that are trying to help us Sure. that we're going to make sure that we can advance that. And I know what kid's been doing with rad 86 to help you guys get that going for you and Martin. And I, I'm really excited about what we can try and do with a lot of that stuff. So quick question for you. And I mean, this is going to be a weird one. What year did you start riding? What year did I start riding? <clears throat> All depends on what, what you consider riding. I mean, like, uh, I graduated graduated from from high school in, in 86 or okay. no 83 and I was writing prior to that but was in the magazines 1980 uh, probably you know we're looking at junior high um, uh, 76 okay something like that where where it was my friend and and his friends and my friends and we all just rode bikes and it's that it's that facebook picture where you know where all the kids are because all the bikes are out in front of the house right you know um or we're all at the jump your history goes to where you were on an se and then from the se i think after that you started riding on a torker right yes okay so i was actually working at se and wanted to ride for se and I was no good. I mean, not to sound shitty about myself, but <laughs> I love to ride, mm -hmm. but I wasn't ever at your guys' caliber. I just yeah. had the passion for it, but I wasn't of that caliber. And Scott was always like, oh, Billy, Billy, you know, we'll get you hooked up. We'll get you hooked up. We'll get you hooked up. So I used to put out, you know, send out co-sponsor letters or sponsorship oh, sure. letters and everything, right? So I had a co-sponsorship from Panda for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, that was never anything big, but I got a co-sponsorship from Torker. And that was always a cool thing. So I'm like, oh man, I'm on a Torker. Right. Scott hated that. I showed up on a Torker. Oh my God, he was so mad. <laughs> you were working for SC and yeah. you rode a Torker. Yeah, he, he was really mad about it. But I always kept saying, well, I want to get an SC. But I couldn't afford an SC back right. then. Those were the expensive, expensive yep. bikes. Yeah, the PK Rippers, the Quad Angles, those were the, the ones that everybody drooled over and that, that's what everybody wanted. I wanted one so bad. Yeah. I, I remember though, uh, he gave Fred Blood that blue and white striped one that mm -hmm. time. I remember that was crazy. And Kendall Crabtree and I would sit back there and sticker frames for everybody. And I'd be stickering the frames going, oh man, I want one of these so bad. And I still remember the day Scott did give me my quad. Yeah. Um, that was, I was 15 years old. And that's when I was going to start my own frame company, which is a whole other story. But <laughs> I built my own frame. Right. Because I kept breaking the <clears throat> workers. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to do this. And Scott was like, what's that? I'm like, oh, this is my frame. I'm going to start my own thing. Now, did you build it in the factory? No, I actually built it over at Voris Dixon. All right, so did you learn how to weld prior to this? Mm -hmm. um, or did you have somebody weld it for you? No, I actually, and this is a whole offshoot story, but when I kept breaking all the torquers, I lived down the street from the Elliots. Mm. Um, and Ray Elliott owned a company called Certified Metal Products. Okay. And certified metal products made all the Laguna frames hmm. and they made the pedal proof wheels. Do you remember the pedal proof wheels? The name sounds familiar. They were the spun aluminum discs yes. that looked like a centerline yep. style wheel. Yep. So I lived right down the street from them. And after I kept breaking my torquers, which all the torquers notoriously broke right at the seat mast area. Never broke one of mine. You never broke no, one of Never yours? broke one. <laughs> Man. I must have been doing something <laughs> wrong because I broke them all the time. Yeah. And after my third one, they said, oh, man, we're not going to warranty any of these for you anymore. So it was a simple crack. Yeah. I'd always take it, give it to Ray and say, hey, Ray, can you weld this for me? I said, sure, no problem. This is when I'm 12, 13-year-old kid, right? Mm -hmm. So after he did it a couple of times, he said, Billy, what's your next day off of school? I don't know. And he goes, your next day off of school, meet me at my van, 6 a.m., bring your bike. Sounds like a child molester at first. <laughs> <laughs> Does sound like a weird story, right? right? So next day I had off, it was some holiday or yeah, whatever, yeah. showed up at his van, brought my bike, and uh, we drove to Certified Metal Products, 
And he said, okay. And he sat me down at a big table. Nice. And he's like, here's where this tubing is. Here's where the box of bottom brackets are. Here's where the head tubes are. Here's, I'm gonna show you how to weld. He showed me how to TIG. Showed me how to control the gun, how to do right. everything. I probably wasted, I don't know, 40 feet of tubing that day. Taught me how to cut on the mill, taught right. me how to notch everything. I still have the frame. Wow. You walked by it when we went into the kitchen. Okay, earlier. really? Wow. Yeah. So, so almost almost a uh, mongoose looking style with the, the big flat. Right, okay. So this is the first frame that I did. I was 12, 13 years old. And if you notice- Yeah, I'm looking at got, the welds. Well, yeah, they're pretty shitty. Uh, but I've held on to it all yeah. this time. So it's got a Laguna tandem bottom bracket. Okay. It's got a Laguna tandem head tube. And this was back in 80, 1980, um, 1981. Do you remember the, the, the distance, the top tube length? Is it like a 18 and a half? I'm gonna say it was, I'm gonna say it was a 19. 19, yeah. Um, and the geometry on it is way off, but what I base this off of is um, the Torker and the Panda. I love the way the Torker rode, except I thought the steering was a little slow. Mm. And the Panda had a lot more room. So I kind of based it off that, but I always wanted a JMC or a GT at the time. So I built or the coin the, logo, the, the, the bologna, the bologna the, strip. Yeah, exactly. The little coin cut back then. Yeah. So I figured, okay, here I am a kid. I get to do whatever I want at this welding table. Now, did you, <clears throat> did you get to bend the tubes also? I had to, he oh, forced me that to do is everything. Awesome. Wow. So this actually ended up becoming a full day and a couple nights after school and after work to build this. So I rode this for a little while and- Did anything break, anything crack? Never broke, never cracked. Perfect. Here it is. Um, chromoly, mild steel. Full chromoly. Full chromoly. Full chromoly. Nice. I had to cut the dropouts. To be shorter? Because <laughs> those are yeah. freaking long. <laughs> I know, well, old school style, right? Yeah, no, that's it. But I held on to it. And then later I ended up saying, okay, that wasn't good enough. And do you remember Randy Rizzo? Then again, the name sounds familiar, but. Okay, so Randy Rizzo was a good friend of mine and he was co-sponsored by VDC. Okay. And he was like, hey Bill, I'm gonna take you down. I'm gonna introduce you to Voris. Okay, cool. So he took me down and introduced me to Voris. So I ended up building this down at Voris's shop. And Voris was gonna start doing these frames for me and I was gonna start my own company. And this was when I was 15. Yeah. And they were gonna be called high tech. This is what I was actually gonna call them. And if you notice on this frame. Do they, does it, is it supposed to have this slight bend in the back roof? No, that was just me screwing up. Okay. <laughs> so I rolled the stays, um, but Everybody, when they look at this frame, they're like, oh, that's like a Pro Neck National Pro without the gusset up there. Okay. And it's like, yeah, but here's the problem. This was before Pro Neck ever did frames. Voris, when I did not put this into production, when Scott gave me a quad angle and said, hey, because Scott saw me show up on this, and he's like, oh, Billy, I was going to sponsor you. We were going to put you on the team. We were going to help you out. We were going to do this. I was like, oh, man, that would be awesome. And he's like, yeah, go grab a quad, pick your quad. So I grabbed a blue quad. I'm like, yeah, I wanna do this. This is gonna be awesome. This is gonna be rad. And I never went through with this. Well, Voris was like, hey, national pro. Cause Voris was crazy with doing all kinds of stuff to where when he did, what frame did he do? He did the hypers, uh, or no, not the hypers. He did the trackers with the oval top tubes and the oval top tubes weren't selling. Right. So he convinced somebody else because he had tons of oval chromoly there to where they did uh, the vectors with the dual mm -hmm. down tubes that were the yep. same oval tubing that the trackers had that were the single oval top tube. Yep, yep. He had to get rid of that tubing. So he convinced Vector, oh, let's do dual down tubes with the oval tubes. And Voris was crazy that way, but it's all just weird industry stuff. Yeah. So with the former pros, that's part of where the legend company and what you're trying to do. I mean, 
we're trying to bring all this history and bring some of this stuff back. Right. Because, right. I mean, you've got so much that people don't know about. I mean, I don't think that people remember when you did more Alice Fiola. Sure. I mean, and I don't think they remember that you were going to be on Haro for a day. Well, I didn't yeah. think it was going to be for a day. And I did. I that wasn't planning on a day. I was riding a, a quadding, or not a quadding, a, a torker at that point in time. And then uh, I was going to get a photo session with John Carr at BMX Plus. Right. Uh, I got a phone call from Bob Haro, and he said, hey... Um, we'd like to, you know, sponsor you. We, we, you know, get you in full gear and the whole night. Now he, I don't know how he found out, but he found out that I was doing a photo session for Torker. Right. <clears throat> he was coming out with his new freestyle frame mm -hmm. that Torker made. made. Yeah. That being said, um, uh, he gave me the full gear, gave me the bike, gave me the whole deal. I did a photo session. It was like a six page spread. And uh, then the very next day, I got a phone call from Bob saying, hey, we're going to need that bike back. You know, um, we were not finished, you know, doing uh, artwork for it or uh, the um, the ads for it. We're going to take some photos and and this and that. So he says, I'll I'll get you a bike as soon as this one's done. And, you know, as soon as we start production. Well, that never happened. So he got the bike back. I entered a competition thinking I was going to be on Haro and got the cover of BMX action, bicycle motocross action, of me riding a torker in full Haro gear. Yeah, yeah I remember so. that. And that's when, when we introduced our extension frame back in 2010. That's when you and I were talking and it was before you had done the former pro and we were gonna try and do that extension frame for you because we had at the time Chris Fox, uh, Kevin Peraza, Larry Edgar, yep. you know, uh, Maddie Cordova. We were, had a bunch of rippers on our freestyle team and we were gonna try and, okay, we're gonna make freestyle happen. We're gonna try and do this. And we haven't been able to get the freestyle side to go, but we were like, okay, we're gonna make this happen. And we did the extension frame and it was based off of that cover for you. Yeah. To where I'm like, okay, we're gonna take our passion freestyle frame and we're gonna do the dual top tube design and we're gonna make it that. And that was all based off of that cover. Wow. And it's funny, I got a call from Haro basically giving me a cease and desist on that wow. one. I actually got it from the Haro Corporation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe Hawk and I actually talked about it though and Joe was actually really cool about it. But that was before we did the former pro and that's mm. part of where the former pro project took off from there but it was just like oh my god you know it, it, it's all fun we're all trying to build bikes we're not trying to none of us are being rich off this no none of us no it just it's it's i go to the the pump track now and i see so many kids at the track um young old uh boys girls everybody and they're just riding bikes and they're having fun and and the weird thing is is that i look over to the left where there's a baseball field and it's completely empty yeah. uh, there's three baseball fields and they're completely empty uh and all these kids are hanging out at this pump track to where you know the city is starting to understand that maybe we need to do pump tracks or maybe bicycle things and just getting butts on bikes. Butts on bikes. That's yeah. That's been my motto for decades. Yeah. Every, everybody always says, oh, you know, I mean, Greg Hill gave me crap the one time, you know, oh, you're never a winner. You were never a champion. You're never going to make anything out of yourself. Okay, cool. I'm never going to make anything out of myself. I'm just a guy who loves bikes and loves trying to push forward and I want everybody to have fun and I want everybody to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. And I mean, I've been blessed. We've gotten bike of the year seven times. We've had team of the year three times. We've had riders at every running of the Olympics. I've got dear friends like yourself that, you know, these are lifetime memories. This sure. is stuff that, you know, it's all because of, you know, bikes it's all because of this yeah and it's chromoly tubing it's chrome plating it's quality work well the the welds and everything about this the, the even the handlebars look pretty i mean they look good 
But it, but it's it's a bike though. It's just having fun. Yeah. And I mean, this is this is yours. And now, yeah, this is what we did for you on the former cruise. <clears throat> now, I heard a story though that this was actually going to be a torquer handlebar though. I heard a story at one point, and I don't know if it's true or not, that Martin actually designed this handlebar. That I don't know. What I I think I know is I the way this whole concept of this this bar angle came up is that look at these bars and imagine two drain posts okay and these are two drain post handlebar or uh, seat posts okay and it just became one top tube gotcha so that makes sense um because i mean if you cut it like that yeah that is that's two a drain, drain pipe yeah, yeah that's two drain pipe seat posts so I had heard a rumor, and, and you're going to have to ask Martin yeah. or Martian next time you see him. <laughs> My wife still jokes because she lived one block away from Martin. Right. So they're right there across from that park. And uh, it's funny. She's always, he was always Martian. So every time I see him, I always call him Martian still. But I had heard that when he was at Torker, this was going to become the Torker handlebar. Uh -huh. And that when Torker kind of screwed him over on the whole deal, that he took it to GT. Gotcha. Because this was supposed to be on, you know, their freestylists. This was mm -hmm. going to eventually be their thing. So either I mean, way, they're great handlebars. Awesome. If Martin, handlebars. Did, if Martin did it, or they did it, or anybody, it's a great handlebar. And you know, the 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 thing is, is that GT GT had stopped making the performer. Yes. Right. They stopped making it. They're no longer in production, and nothing in their realm even looked like the performer anymore. No. So then I I came to you one day and I said I wanted to do a performer. Yeah. You know, um, but I wanted to call it a performer, not a performer. I want a performer. I wanted to change the name up a little bit. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then we talked, and you said, Yeah, no problem. Now this is uh, don't get upset. No. You said, I go, well, how long is this going to take, you know, for the, you know, get a prototype? And he says, two weeks. Oh. Two, no, two weeks. I guarantee you, I probably said that. And it took two weeks. Two years. It took two years. Yeah. It took, well, the thing is, is that after talking to you and nothing happened in two weeks, and I haven't heard from anything from you in two weeks, two months, six months, I haven't heard anything. I went somewhere else. I yep. went to True Torch. True Torch. That. Yep. Right? So then we had the, Pro former made yep. by Johnny. And what was weird, was, what was cool about Johnny was, you know, he used to work for GT. Yep. He used to weld the performers together. Yep. Um, he is in Santa Ana. Yeah. Where GT started from. So my bike literally was more GT than GT's bike is now. Oh, 100%. Right. So um, anyhow, I had 250 of these made by Johnny. And it, again, he would say, Two weeks and it took six months Easy. and it took forever to get these bikes but he did a great job in the very beginning unbelievable i started to push and say hey you know let's get this on time and schedule and all this other stuff and he rushed and and started doing some bad work and you know nothing against johnny or anything like that Not at but all. it's a great guy but I wanted quality. If my name was going to be on it, I wanted quality work and I wanted it to be done. Anyhow, so we get the last bikes from Johnny and I swear to you, your bike shows up on my doorstep. The, the pro former that I wanted from Supercross shows up on my doorstep and I'm going, wow, this is unbelievable. Now we got to do this. So so Johnny's out the door, now Supercross is in, and I get a letter from GT saying cease and desist uh, on the pro former because it sounds way too much like a performer. And you know, my bike looks a lot like the performer that they don't make anymore. Yeah. And so I talk to you and they would they have nothing to stand on? Yeah, and I, I actually called them and spoke to some of their people inside because it's funny, the group that owns GT also owns Mongoose mm. and they actually copied that six bar design one yeah. time for their Mongoose Hoopty and they sold about 100,000 of them to Walmart. And I got tipped off by one of their sales reps saying, hey Bill, we copied your six bar design 
and we're gonna sell them at Walmart and they're gonna be a $99 bike and just letting you know. And I'm like, oh, bullshit, you can't do that. <laughs> so I called them yeah. and they're like, hey, do you have a patent on the frame design? And I'm like, well, it's a bicycle. You can't patent a frame design. And they're like, exactly, fuck off. And I'm like, whoa, what? And they're like, fuck off. And I'm like, okay, called my attorney yeah. and said, hey, what can we do? And they're like, well, here's the thing. We can go after them for trade dress. There is a, such a thing as trade dress and we can do this. And you know, how many of them are they gonna make and what's the cost? And by the time we figured out the lawsuit cost of what it would take, it was gonna cost us about $200,000 to sue them to hopefully, hopefully get maybe 210, 220,000 from them. And it was gonna take two to three years. And I was like, yeah, screw it. Let's do it. Because I just want to do it for the point. You yeah, know? I just right? want to. I just want to prove a point. Yeah. And he's like, "Cool. I need that all cash up front." And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't have that." Guess we're not doing that. Yeah. And he's like, "Well," and and I just let it go. Yeah. So when you did come to me on that, because I know it took us forever to get that done, because. We were doing custom drawn tapered tubes and heat treating. And you know, I, I get a little overzealous sometimes to sure. where I'm like, hey, we can do this. We can knock this out quick. And the problem comes in is that I get overzealous about the project and I think it should be everybody's priority. Right. But all of a sudden it's not everybody else's priority. It's my priority. Sure. It's your priority. But everybody else is kind of like, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. We got, got other stuff other in the stuff oven, yeah. In the, yeah, exactly. We've got other stuff we're doing. And it's like, man, okay. So, but I called Mongoose back, or GT back on your situation yeah. and said, hey guys, fuck off. Yeah. And they're like, what? I'm like, fuck off. You guys told me, fuck off. Well, I'm telling you. And they're like, all right. <laughs> and, and we just kind of called it even at that point. So with that being said, we took the pro former name. Yep. And we cut it and we swapped the sides and yeah. now it's a former pro. Yeah. So and it still works and they can't get pissed off there yeah. because I'm a former pro. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still pro. You're not former. I, I, I have fun and I have and I play. And we but, probably gotta bleep but, this whole thing a lot, huh? Supercross has the the bike, you know, and, and to be able to work with you and have, you know, when they sent me drawings of, of the Q and A of the, not the Q and A, was it uh, quality control, yeah. right? They sent me pictures of the quality control of what you sent them and, and the, the, the seat mast, the was cut at an angle. You know, if you followed that angle 40 feet back, it would be off 20 feet. But on the bike itself, it's half a millimeter. It's it's on. It looks fine to me. It looks fine to anybody else. But it was off, and that's what they said that they'll fix. <laughs> they they put a weld, and when they welded it, they stopped in the very top, which to any normal person wouldn't catch at all. But to your company, it didn't work right. It had to be on the bottom. Has it to be. Has to be on the bottom. Has to I be. didn't know this. You know, when building a bike, I just didn't didn't, didn't realize where you had to stop a weld. Yeah. But when you stop a weld on the bottom, you don't see the start and the stop and all this other stuff. And it looks great. But for that type of quality, nothing beats it. Well, thank you. And I mean that's yeah. stuff that I've learned from I mean, back here when I did this. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is- You start, stop, start, stop, start. There's Dude, so many starting spots. So, so many, many. <laughs> so many. But this is what a 12 year old kid did. Right? This That's is it. where I was like, okay, I'm learning. I'm gonna do this. And when we first did the six bar frame, I used to actually cut the tubes myself, miter the tubes myself. Johnny True Torch welded a lot of our original six bar frames. Right. So, I mean, I've got a lot of a lot of faith in what he's hmm. doing. And, oh, sure. You know, he built probably, I'm gonna say the first 2,000, first 3,000 of our frames. Yeah. Uh, Johnny used to build a lot of frames. He built our frames, he built S&M's frames, he used to build some of the boss frames. He built, I mean, he built a ton of frames. But you learn a lot and you do things. And that's part of where as we've progressed, I wanna make everything move forward and it's better and it's better. And, and that's where 
I know a lot of my vendors, my tubing suppliers, my dropout suppliers, my laser cutters, they get frustrated with me because we just had some new dropout samples that were brought in and I actually sent them back because I got pissed because they left a little bit of slag from the way that the water jet came around and the way the laser jet came around. Mm -hmm. And it just left a little bit of slag. It was nothing major, but I was like, no. But that, would, that, that prototype, that would be on every bike. Right, it would be yeah. on everything. And I was like, no, can't be, no. can't, can't, has to. And, and it's part of the production. I mean, you guys know with your automobile shop, with your cars that you're doing. We take pride in what we do. When you we have work, to. You know, I, I'm, I'm putting a quarter panel on a, what was that? A, TLX Acura. An Acura. Okay. Right, a whole quarter panel, whole back end quarter panel, just, and then welding it together. And then somebody had mentioned that we're, we should use silica bronze instead of just, you know, the regular steel that comes out of the MIG welder. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that we swapped everything out. We went straight argon. We're using silica bronze and we're welding this thing up. And I'm grinding and I'm smoothing out and I'm making this thing look, you know, the, the, the body guys aren't going to have to do much. No. <laughs> it's gonna make it easy. Well, that's like when we send our frames out for anodize. I've had so many of our competitors, and I've actually told a couple of our competitors, and if any of them are listening right now, when we weld our 7,005 frames, we're using a 5053 rod. Hmm. And we're using the 5053 rod because on the 7,005, when it goes through the heat treat process and goes through all the chemical processing of it, the 5053 rod blends with the 7,005 better, and it allows for a cleaner weld, a cleaner heat treatment. You don't have any stress zones. Everything flows better. And also, the nice thing compared to the 5050 rod is that when you anodize it, it mm. takes the dye properly. Gotcha. So your gotcha. anodized zone looks right. And it's a small little thing. It's a small detail. Right. But I've had a couple of our competitors go, hey, Bill, our welds always look dark. Yeah, they do. You're not, You're not using the right rod. <laughs> You're not no, you just let right. the secret out. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Because I don't mind sharing. Yeah. Because I want everybody's bikes to be better. Yeah. I want everybody's product to elevate. And that's where we've done a lot of these videos. And, and here's the thing. I'm old, okay? I'm getting we're, real old. We're both old. Um, <laughs> but I want some of this history and some of this knowledge to move forward. And in one of our videos on the forks, I shared why we don't weld all the way around the bottom race to where on these forks, if you notice this race, it's pressed on and then it's only welded tacked on the side where the legs go yep. on. And we've always done that on our forks because by not welding all the way around, you don't have that stress riser zone. So everybody, when they're having their forks, when they're having to break, they're always bending, they're always breaking right the front through where the crown the back, race yeah. was. Yep. And it was always going because when you have that heat affected zone, because that weld that goes all the way around, so that everybody's thickening up their steer tubes. Let's make them thicker. Let's make them But they're them still thicker. welding there. Right, still welding there because they weren't fixing the problem. They weren't yeah. addressing what the actual issue was. So we were addressing what the issue was to where we make it a tight machined race, press it on, weld it where the fork legs go on, and we're good. So that way it fixes the problem. So that's why, you know, when we're doing all the former pro forks, when you're doing all of our supercross forks, we do that. And I'm trying to share some of that information so that <coughs> other people, if they want to do it, yeah. they can do it. Uh, and a lot of it is like I learned when I was hanging out at SE and hanging out at Voris's shop. Voris's shop was funny. He had Mickey Big Mouth bottles everywhere. That guy <laughs> used to drink Mickey Big Mouth like there was no tomorrow. That's funny. And there'd be empty ones or half full ones or full ones on every mill, every welding table because he'd crack one open, start drinking it, and he'd set it down and he'd go do something else and he'd go grab another one, crack it open, start drinking it, and he'd have them all over the shop. And it was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but Forrest, you're gonna use this one? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't drink. Otherwise, yeah. I could have been a really drunk alcoholic kid back then. But at the SE shop, I learned a lot from the welders there because mm -hmm. since Ray Elliott started teaching me a lot when I was a kid, when I went to, back to SE and after I had welded up that frame, I started going out and hanging out in the welding department. When I'd get done sweeping the floors, get done packing, get done stickering things, I go watch. I watch what they were doing. And they taught me the trick of, they were just bringing in uh, coat hangers rather than bringing in actual welding rod. 
they were just bringing in mild steel coat hangers and using wow. that to weld the quad angle frames mm -hmm. and the OM flyers and any frame that was steel. They were just bringing in coat hangers and using coat hangers to weld. And I'm like, what the heck? Why are they doing this? I thought that it's a chromoly frame. You got to use a chromoly sure. rod. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're just using a mild steel, just junk rod because it gets so hot and it gets so heated up that it becomes a hardened area. So in order to keep the frame strong and to keep it from getting too hot and having that heat affected zone and having the weld crack, we're using a cheaper, lower tensile material that brings its strength up to be the chrome And melts strength. at a lower temperature, yeah. Well, it melts at a lower temperature, but it also makes the strength balance out. Mm. Because when you melt it, you're basically heat treating the materials it's bringing sure. up. You're bringing up that aging on it automatically. So if you're only bringing up that little zone, if you're using a, a less strong material, a weaker material, you're balancing it out with the strength of the chromoly. And I was like, wow, I wonder if that actually really works. And by being there from being a little kid and watching these little tricks that these old, and I don't want to say old, but I mean, they were older to me. I was 12, sure. anybody was older than yep. me. But watching the way that these old, I guess craftsmen, yep. was, they, everybody who welds a frame, everybody who builds anything were, were craftsmen. But watching these craftsmen, the way that they would do things and watching the way that the spring back's done on the bending and how chromoly springs back at a different rate compared to the mild steel and watching the way that things were done, you, you learn all these tricks. And that's part of where, again, you know, we've got to have the weld start and stop here. We've got to do this. And we've got to make sure everything's purged right. We've got to make sure the vent holes are right. We've got right. to make sure like when we have the frames welded on with the gussets, you know, the down tube is completely welded on before the gusset goes on. Because some companies, they tack it on, tack on the gusset, weld it all the way around, and the down tube's not welded on all the way. And it's like, wait, you're, you're causing a stress area. Now, that's also where you learn not to weld the gusset at certain parts to be able to have that stress gap to gotcha. allow for flex. So right. it won't crack. Successful is that I don't have that cutthroat instinct, okay? <laughs> because I'd pull up with the van and I'd have the tubes and someone would get a flat. You'd give it to them. Yeah. I, See, that's my problem is that I have the idea that I know that this would work. Right. But then I just give shit away. Well, I've got the idea that it would work too. I'm like, kid, that, that, that idea would work. But I would. I'd pull up with the van and a kid would come up and he'd go, Mr. I got a flat. Oh, man. Yep. Okay. Let's no get you fixed what, up and let's no get you going. What, you're still that 12-year-old kid at heart that somebody luck into their shop to build a frame. Exactly. And it's... You just want to help out the rest of the I haven't, I them. haven't lost that. Yeah. Okay. And that's where like when Eddie and I are sitting down, cause again, I, I didn't know when we sat down today, what we were going to talk about. I did, had no clue whether we were going to talk about cars, whether we were going to talk about BMX, whether we we're going to talk about pump tracks, whether we we're going to talk about his movies, whether we we're going to talk about that custom guitar that the guy built him, whether we were going to talk about anything. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. Yeah. All I know is that we were friends and we're going to try and document some history and that this is the first time that we're going to sit down and talk about this on film because oh, yeah. there's going to be a hundred other things that people are going to want to hear. Send in your questions. Yo, questions. okay. Send in your questions, what you want to know. No. <laughs> well, everybody's got my email. Right, Trust right, me. Right. Bill at supercrossbmx.com. Everybody's got that. Right. So you just want to, you know, things that you want to know about either BMX or what I've done freestyle uh, about the movie movies I've worked on about uh, uh, the book or the frame. How is the book going? It's actually going really well. And it's, where it's, is my copy? Oh, guess what? Oh. <laughs> oh, I got the fastest way to the car. Down the bat pole, actually. The bat pole. That's <laughs> what you need. We've actually talked about that, putting in a bat pole. I don't it know wouldn't be hard. Do. No, wouldn't it be wouldn't. Hard. I think you <laughs> drop down right there. Problem is, I'd probably be the monkey trying to climb the pole. Yeah, well, <laughs> the trampoline on the bottom. Yeah, oh, trampoline there on it the is. bottom would be See, awesome. It's only one way up. You have to use the trampoline. <sighs> have right? to jump up. So, how many movies have you done since we talked about movies? 
50, 60, uh, 120? I think, I think I, on the, the books, on the IMDb, I think I'm in the 49, almost 50 range of movies. That, and the lower budget ones aren't on there. Yeah. So, and then not counting any of the commercials I've done. Right. Uh, but I, you know, Foot Locker, Del Monte, Mountain Dew, stuff like that. And, uh, but this is what he brought in. So for the guy that has it all, you don't What's have Eddie Fiola pipeline lager. Oh! The pipeline lager. I know, but you're not a drinker. No, but, but it this is a moment. And and you know, um, you either have to pop them open or keep them in a cool, dry place because they will. Because it's beer. It it's it will. Um, Dude, this is amazing. Ferment. So this is your new venture, Pipeline Lager? Uh, so it's a company that we know, a Alasta beer company that's making it for us. And uh, they, they asked me if I wanted to make a beer. And uh, they, I came down and I went and did all the testing and uh, trials. How so many I, did you have to drink? The, the, the three that I tested, uh, I found the one I wanted because it's, you know, I like it. So it's a blonde lager, um, and uh, it was good. And uh, we have an in-house uh, designer that uh, designed the the logo and and the the thing of the the can. So uh, Mindy Fruman, she made it, and it was awesome. I heard awesome. Mindy Fruman is amazing. Actually, she is. I've heard that right? she is so, just like the shit. That's what we have. And so if you go on, you know, the Rad Designs, nineteen eighty six, you can get beer. So <laughs> the last video that I did with Randy Roberts, yeah. and, and it was actually weird because the first sit down we did was Randy Roberts, who is my brother from another, who's been the longest running rider on Supercross to where we were thinking about it. it's 21 years that wow. he's been on factory Supercross. And he didn't want to do the video. He was nervous. He didn't want to get behind a camera. The camera's not so, scary. I grabbed a bottle of tequila. Oh, I saw that. Mezcal. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I caught so much crap. I actually had a mom call and yell at me for 52 minutes. It was at 52 minutes and 13 seconds on the timer on the phone. She had called and yelled at me that I was bad for BMX because mm. I was promoting alcohol no. in the video. No. No. What I was doing is, it's my buddy David. Yeah. Um, David Catching has a company that's Rancho de Luna Mezcal. From what I've been told, and I don't remember because I drank six of them and then I kind of blacked out. <laughs> um, they're big bottles. Gotcha. Uh, I, I, everybody says that they drink a six pack. I notice you're smart. Yeah. You only do a four pack. Yes, yes. So that way you, you don't got black out. Two to go. <laughs> two to go. So the Rancho de Luna bottle, I'll show you in a second. Or actually, kid, can you grab one? It's right around, around the corner. You got spares laying around. <laughs> so, well, they're like $100 a bottle. Slap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. The Rancho de Luna that. Mezcal. Now look, each bottle is numbered. We need to do this for yours as yeah, well. Yeah. But this is 606 out of 5040. But they're hundred dollars a bottle. Rancho de Luna Mezcal. This is the best Mezcal in the world. But everybody says that they drink six packs, right? Oh, yeah. I go home, I drink a six pack. Oh, I go home, I drink a six pack. So I was joking around in the video. So yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I went home and I drank a six pack and I don't remember what happened next, right? Well, well, if you did, yeah, you wouldn't remember. Yeah, I, I'm sure of it, right? Sure. I don't drink alcohol, so I'm sure if I did drink that, that's probably what would happen. But, oh, Rancho, Rancho de Luna Mezcal, the best Mezcal in the world. David, you owe me another bottle or two. $100 a bottle. Okay, Eddie Fiola, endorsement. $100 a bottle. Yeah. $100 a can, it's 400 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> King of the beer skate, king of the skate park beer. But no, she called and she was like, oh, you're promoting alcohol to kids. No. I'm not promoting alcohol to kids. I don't drink. I'm not telling the kids to drink. We actually said that it was I'm not, not safe yeah. for work on the video. And that's where they're probably gonna have to bleep me. Sometimes <laughs> my mouth gets a little, I don't mean to. I just, yeah. we're talking, we're friends. We're just sharing information. And this is rad though. Yeah, so it's, it's more of a, you know, Put on the counter, check it out. I made a beer. I made a beer. I'm a BMX guy. How awesome is that? <laughs> yeah, right. I made a beer. I made a book. I got a poster, and uh, You're, and I have a bike. You can retire happy. Yeah, right. No, hey. But there is no retiring for us. We're BMX guys. We don't retire. <clears throat> is this mine though? Yes, can it's I yours. Keep this? Yes, yours. Hundred dollars can. I'm so happy. <laughs> 
So are you for no, 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 no. This is what you're saying. I've got my checkbook. This is <laughs> awesome. So now we got to make your own coffee, though. Right, right. Yeah, Steve Stedham, skateboarder, mm -hmm. has his own coffee. So oh. I got to talk to him. Unless you know somebody with the the coffee. I think I, I think I do. All right. Coffee next, coffee, but do, you could still buy me coffee. So. Can we do a Kona Blue? Oh, go to Rad86 website. Rad, Rad Designs 1986. Rad Designs 1986, buy Eddie a coffee. Yeah. If you buy him a couple, he may send one my way because yeah. everybody <laughs> knows that's my, that's my elixir of toys. We are Choice. coffee Choice. connoisseurs. Yes, yeah. do you like a good Kona blend? Yeah, I do, actually. Oh, Kona blend's my favorite. But I gotta, I gotta throw in my creamer, so I kind of mess it up. On a Kona, I can do it black. Otherwise, I'm going, eh, creamer, a little sugar. Have you Kona. tried, now I'm gonna promote somebody else, have yeah. you tried the new um, Monster, uh, what is it, the, it's infused with, um, it's the nitrogen nit infused. Nitrogen, um, I have coffee it. drink. Nitrogen, nit yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's a latte, it's sweet black and, and latte. Really? Yeah. Cold. Ooh. Nitrogen and you know that you know if you have ever had a uh, a Guinness and the bubbles are small and it's really easy to drink, right? Okay. Where this is where the the nitrogen is in the coffee. In the coffee. It's weird is that you're drinking the coffee, but we're then have to if go you get a couple right yeah. now, you understand that. Yeah, we're gonna really... stop filming and we're gonna go grab these right now. <laughs> They're really good. It's it's unfortunate. The the sweet black. I think only has like 10 calories. Oh. Right? Good. And then the latte has like 90 calories, but is sweet and it's creamed as every kind. But Okay. Next time you come, the refrigerator will be stocked with it. Right now it's water and Gatorade. You are not going to believe you're I you're going to hate me for it. Cuz you're going to drink all of them? No, you're going to hate me because now you're going to love it. Well, that yeah. that makes me happy though. <laughs> Cuz coffee is my elixir. Yeah. That's right. that's that's my go-to. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't Coffee though, just yeah. like you. Oh my goodness, these guys know. Every morning, walk in with coffee. Tucker comes in. Hey, Dad, it's about ten o'clock. You want a coffee? Yeah, I can yes, go for round two. You know. Yeah. Oh, it's noon. Yeah, I can go for round three. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's four. I can go for Again. coffee four. You know, six oh. o'clock at night. Yeah, going for a coffee. My wife, she'll be like, hey, it's about eight. Did you want a coffee? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. I can go to sleep drinking <laughs> right. black coffee. Weird, right? That's what's weird. And what's weird is coffee like mellows me. If I don't have my coffee, I'm like. You're all jittery. Yeah, Which but weird, if I yeah. have coffee, I'm like, mm, everything kind of clicks into line. Nice. Without I can, it, yeah, without my coffee. Everybody's gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's gonna die. Except, <laughs> except for you guys. You guys don't die. Since we're on the. This is being documented. Yes, so since we're being documented. Um, <clears throat> why can't I change my age? Why can't I change? Would somebody email, ask me, <laughs> see if you can do this. I, I, I haven't gone to the DMV yet to try to change my age, but uh, I want to, so I can be 65, so I can get no penalties on my retirement, so. So we can just do BMX and cars full time. Full time. Nothing else. Yeah. But, but I, you know, uh, uh, SAG has three requirements that in order to get full benefits, you have to have had 35 credits. And 35 credits means if you had, had to have done a movie that made you exit amount of money. Right. All right, so that I qualify for. Yep, Hangover got you on that one. Right, so um, the other thing is that you have had throughout your whole entire life span of working in the industry of the movie work for SAG, you have had to have made over $2 million. Check mark. Congratulations. Right. Damn. So, so that being said, and the other one being said, the only thing that's keeping me from getting full benefits is 65. Is being 65. I'll sign the paper for All you. All right, see, there it is. I have a petition. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. Wow, that's awesome. Just a, you know, food for thought. <laughs> Let's let's see what we can do. Call lawyer. Call, call. Yeah. Anybody know say. any lawyers out there? Yeah. You probably. I mean, like. Hey, Barry. There it I'm is. Gonna call you later. <laughs> <laughs> be expecting a call. It's gonna be a tongue twister one for you. You're gonna have to figure this one out though. Let's hope Eddie be 65. I'm 65. I want to be 65. It was nice seeing you. Nice seeing you too. I love you, baby. Well, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh. Every so corner. you got busy in this and I forgot that. Every corner has, has flowers and, and balloons of hearts and things like that on the way up. 
So we thought of an idea. We thought of an idea. This is this is how you do your idea. This is how you do your Valens Day card. You t you go to the store and you take a picture of it, and then you send it to your your wife or your good loved one, and then you spent no money, and you oh. still spent the time doing it. So it's mentful. <laughs> That's an interesting. Okay, baby, I love you. I'm gonna send you a picture later. <laughs> So on that note, send, send emails, send questions uh, to Bill over here, and uh, we'll answer what we can when we do it again. Yeah, so again. We've got, we're on mics, and... Uh, yeah, I think that's not been a good thing to be on mic, because I think time. it picks up on everything. So we get mic'd up on, on the set. Sometimes, you know, even the stunt guys get mic'd up. Yeah. Sometimes we're saying shit about everyone else so we don't want anybody else to know about. But we don't, because we're, we're just stun guys. Why, why are you miking us? And then we forget we're mic'd up. And, oh, yeah. Oh, this guy's going to die. <laughs> 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 and the only, one, only guy that can hear it is, uh, is, uh, is the audio guy. So. And he just laughs. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, we've got big plans coming up for the future. We haven't shared anything to you guys today. Eddie's got some ideas. I've got some ideas. Kid over here who you've probably heard off screen that I think he's gonna get a little bit of camera time right now that he's not even ready for. Kid has some ideas. Couple. Couple. We've got a couple good ideas on some yeah. things. So this is part one, or is it part two, isn't it? Uh, this, what, was the, what was that famous movie that was History of the World part two that they never uh, they did a part never, one for? Yeah, hey, that's a good idea. So that yeah. way everybody was like, oh, part two, well, I never we saw missed. part one. See, we're gonna do it in in out of order. We could do it out of order. We are, we've always been out of order. <sighs> oh. All right, guys. Well, today was part one, part two, part three. Maybe it was part one. So I, one I don't of, know what one of one of many. One of many. So, part two. Pot shots part two. Uh, so, stay tuned. Like, subscribe. I don't know how long this thing was. We were talking. I know my wife came in. It's been a busy day. We've got a lot going on. Eddie's got stuff to do. Kids got stuff to do. I've got stuff to Is do. Is there a subscribe button somewhere on the screen? Somewhere. It's, it's right around somewhere. I he think knows. It's right on your hat. Yeah, right. Right subscribe. Now. I don't know. Does subs when you subscribe, does it cost anything? No, it's free. So subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Just subscribe. And I didn't like when that word subscribe makes you think, oh, I'm gonna have to spend some money. You don't. So just press the button. Yeah, and like it. Yeah. Like it. We're trying to build BMX up. My goal is to make BMX be the most trending thing in the YouTube algorithm. I don't know how to do it unless these guys like, subscribe, and share. Again, doesn't cost anything. It's free. Yeah. Kids, does button. it cost anything? Did I charge you anything? Sanity. Yeah. It does cost you dignity. All right. On that note, we're out. So on the website, they, they have uh, an option for me to box the item. Uh -huh. And so every time we, we come up with something new and how do I get into the building and, and box the item and you know say the guy's name or whoever you know bought the things. And since we have so many different cars, I come sliding in one car in one day and then a uh, golf cart the next day and um, the DeLorean coming out of the DeLorean. Uh, the best was the, uh, the Cub when we did the Cub. Oh. He just... <laughs> but these are all one take wonders. Yeah, I'll have to send it to you. Mr. McQueen, you got it all set up, we go. ready to go. We're gonna ship it out sometime this week and uh, hope you're happy. I love that! Right. <laughs> Let me see. Come in hot, stab the brakes. It's a little Neapolitan car, a little yeah, cop little car.